Everybody, Happy New Year, and welcome back. It's business. I'm hoping that you're not nursing too bad of a hangover. I wanted to point out that we have three different skins going on here. The crappy default skin, as you can see by the rust. The turrets are from Tanza's uh, Benson, and then the torpedo racks and a couple other items are from the rust-free version by AWOL Freedom. I can't get the damn thing to work, uh, you know just one set of skins to work so whatever uh tier 8 match and this is citizen solider but i'm guessing citizen soldier uh his name was actually taken up because in the youtube comment section you'll see it's citizen soldier beats me whatever i'm guessing that's the case so the tier 8 benson us destroyer this thing's a badass i loved it back in closed beta um things were pretty different back then though it had five and a half kilometer torps i believe uh stock and then you had an upgrade for eight kilometer uh torps which was a huge boost now you only have the option for the 9.2 kilometer torps you can't get more or less range uh but the taking a look at my notes here the uh, damage goes up from 11,600 to 16,600 uh, 16, and uh, the reload goes up by 11 seconds and the speed is the same at 55 knots and uh, these cannons though like the, the whole US gunboat type of thing is awesome I mean these are this is strictly stock uh, talking about the the totals here, but 18 rounds a minute from these uh, five 127 millimeter cannons, and they have a default range of 10 and a half kilometers, upgraded range of 11.6, and uh, I mean, look at this crap. Look at how close he is, and how he already has another set of uh, uh, salvos ready to go before the first one even hits. Now he did send off a, a good spread of torps there. The Pensacola definitely sees him. He's trying to avoid him. And I just wanted to mention, when you hit Z to follow in uh, a replay, it kind of screws things up a little bit. It's not as smooth as it would be in the real game. But he gets a couple hits on the Pensacola, takes him out. So good job there. But it gets a little better. Because the Cleveland behind him, I guess he wasn't really paying attention. There's one, there's two, ding, 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 there's three. <laughs> That's ridiculous. So the other main features for the Benson that you got to keep in mind are, one, it has a great top speed at 38 knots. Um, I think this is the last of the really fast uh, destroyers. I I can't remember the new totals on the Gearing or uh, Fletcher, but um, it does have a 7.4 kilometer detection range stock. So, you know, that's uh, actually something you can work with. Back in the closed beta, you were spotted before you could use the Torps, period. And that was a giant pain in the ass. So, you know, now it's a, a I wouldn't say easier, it's just a more manageable situation using uh, this ship. And I really did prefer the Benson over the Fletcher and the Gearing when I played those in closed beta. And the reason was it handled like how I thought a destroyer should. Uh, the, all right, let me put it to you this way the Atlanta handles like an oversized destroyer. The Fletcher and the Gearing, back when I played them, um, and I'm sure it's different now, of course, but um, they played like undersized cruisers. So to put that into perspective, so it it's basically meaning the same thing, but um, it's about the the fact that like they're basically mislabeled in their class, you know, in terms of that's how they feel like as far as their their handling's concerned, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's just my opinion, of course. It's going to be a while till I get to this ship again, but uh, I got to say, after watching this, I'm looking forward to it. And the Otago here, though, uh, he beached himself. He was trying to back up and get things going. Uh, not really sure if he ever anticipated Citizens Benson being over here, but unfortunately for him, that's how it was, and now he's dead. So... <laughs> Uh, pretty good spread there by Citizen. I mean, that's one of the harder situations, in, in my opinion, to gauge. Um, so if you just dump the torps, you know, kind of in, in that area, you should be able to get something. But uh, Citizen turns back, heads uh, back towards the middle. And unfortunately, this is a, a pretty interesting moment here in the match. So this Turpitz is really playing this poorly. And he's exposed to an enemy, uh, New Mexico, to the south. 
and he's uh, been getting hit by that guy. And he has those airdrop torps come in, land a really good uh, spread from his starboard side, and then he gets nailed from the port side by the Fubuki. Yikes. And th that guy was at almost full health, and he just, he's gone now. Just dead. But he manages to uh, get the Fubuki here. And unfortunately, there were some leftover planes. Dive bombers came in, did some pretty good damage, and had him spotted. Uh, now he just got hit by the New Mexico, bringing him down even further. And now there's two destroyers ahead of him who are picking on a battleship uh, just at the edge of the cap circle there. And one of these, and this is actually pretty surprising that the uh, the Russian DD here didn't bother to switch his guns over and start engaging uh, Citizen in his Benson. I mean, he started off with about the same health. I mean, they were pretty close to each other in terms of their overall health, but he just ignored him and kept shooting at the, uh, the battleship, and that gives him the Kraken. So, how much better can this get for him, right? I mean, he's already got over 100,000 damage this match, and now he's got another kill for the Farragut's. So, boom, just like that. If you've noticed at all, by the way, take a look at the spawn. There's two ships on this team that are AFK. Now consider that in the overall scheme of things, that they're up by 140 points. They, they have a, uh, a numbers advantage, but it's not really a real advantage because of the fact that two of them are AFK. So this is a game that could still go either way very quickly. And now he's on the 8 line here, which is, a v honestly, on north, this is one of the most dangerous areas you can be. It's a pivotal area. It's a very key component to controlling the map, of course. Uh, but the way that... The way that the these enemies are moving makes it seem like they have absolutely no idea that he's here. Despite the fact that he already has six kills, and he just cleared out this whole area of destroyers, and their whole team, actually, of destroyers, in, you know, a, a minute, maybe, maybe a little bit longer than that. And this New Mexico doesn't move uh, in time, and there it is. So he gets the Confederate medal, and now he's up to seven kills. Now, there was a moment there where if you take a look at the minimap, the battleships that are remaining on uh, the enemy team, they're all lined up in a, a rather interesting spot where it gave him enough of a chance to move to the south because the Lexington here uh, revealed himself. He, he was spotted and... That gave him the chance to rush down as fast as he could to uh, get in and try to engage and destroy the enemy carrier, which is a pretty big deal when you're talking in a tier 8 match, and it's a tier 8 carrier. So he drops a smoke after getting spotted and uh, starts dumping a bunch of shells into the, the Lexington here, and he does a great job with leading, uh, not having to really do much in the way of test shots, and starts uh, whittling away. You can see that the Lexington's on fire, there's another fire, but he does have torque bombers coming in. And here they come. So he's... Ugh, scary moment as a destroyer. And while he's anticipating the drop and setting up, <laughs> he was still firing. Manages to kill the Lexington, and does a nice little dodge here. Splits the torps. Very nice work. So eight kills and a lot of damage. I really thought he was gonna get even more here. Um, he, in all seriousness, he could have ended up with 10 kills in this match. Here is one that I do not understand how he didn't get, uh, didn't kill, but um, you could tell he's hitting on the side there and he's obviously hitting in more saturated areas. Um, so the middle part of the ship of that New Mexico and further back is probably where he needed to land the shells to be able to get the hits. But almost all of those 45 hits that you see on the right uh, did no damage. And uh, maybe only one fire started. And then, so he was really close to getting that kill. And then if you take a look at this New Orleans over here, he's only got about 2,000 health left. And so close. Which, it, that's amazing to me, is that despite what was happening here in this match, he still could have done more. <laughs> I mean... I, 
one wrong move by that uh, New Mexico or or the Terpits there, and this could have been 10, 11 kills. Just think about that for a minute. Holy shit. That is that is nuts. And I honestly thought he would have more, uh, more shell hits, which, whatever. But 65 torpedoes sent out, 13 hits, 116,000 damage with those. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Uh, a lot of money earned. Um, his base XP is 2,700, so you could just see it there in the grayed, uh, grayed out column for the credits. So again, congrats, man. That was a hell of a match. Way to go. And a lot of you guys have sent in some really awesome stuff, too. Uh, a lot of it I can't use, but uh, some of this, like a detonation on a nearly full health rune in an Azumo. <laughs> that was pretty good. That was a pretty interesting match overall. And same with this one by Donovan and his Nicholas, who narrowly avoids a Torp spread from a Minikaze, who does end up hitting a teammate a couple times later on in the match. And uh, he's trying to kill off this destroyer, but he did send some Torps, which end up finding a Kohlberg inside the smoke. And then the destroyer gets taken out. And then we get to watch those same Torps that narrowly missed him detonate a Co uh, Konigsberg. <laughs> and then switching over to the Yamato, very entirely different type of gameplay of course. Uh, we have Antarev and he's on Islands of Ice showing that some, actually this is the type of stuff that I just can't seem to do against the damn Zhao. And look at all these shells come in after him. <laughs> Goodbye, 40,000 health just gone. And the best way sometimes to answer the threat of another Yamato is with a Yamato of your own. And this guy did not bother to move or do anything about this salvo coming in and paid the price with 52,000 health being taken right off his ass. And then we have stuff like this where, you know, the Furutaka and uh, the Colorado are amongst the least liked ships in the game and despite their buffs they still carry that stigma of hey these ships are terrible blah 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 and you know maybe comparatively speaking they're not that good um but after these buffs they're certainly a lot better nice salvo double citadel first blood devastating strike he didn't fire again until 95 seconds after that around that time when he Finds an Omaha, nice and broadside, and sends a salvo over to him. Let's see how that turns out. Double Citadel, devastating strike. Alright. Doesn't fire again until he gets spotted by a Pensacola over here. Alright. Bring these guns around, see what we could do. It's not that far away. But, get the lead and watch, watch the shell on the right. Plunge right underneath, boom. <laughs> devastating strike, <laughs> detonation. Wow, three salvos, three devastating strikes. That's ridiculous. And to end the video today, we're going to show off uh, some sweet moves and action by Chipster in his Zhao. Uh, Chipster, I he was the first one I featured, actually, as far as the user videos are concerned. Um, I renamed the video uh, user vid one um, just to keep some sort of coherent uh, structure as far as uh, you know the organization of it all uh, he picks on every ship that he can shoot at in this match he doesn't get any kills but he ends up with over 200,000 damage which actually I think is the highest amount of damage I've I've seen myself of somebody uh, who doesn't get kills and like it, it's just ridiculous I think there's about 80,000 HE damage and 80,000 fire damage with some torps as well which you'll see in a moment but um, look at all that fire coming in. And then he's in the middle of a salvo, has to dodge uh, Shimakaze Torps, I believe. And look at this, so close. He's like, yeah, I'm good. All right, back to shooting at the damn battleships. <laughs> but um, yeah, I will be streaming today for just a couple hours. I do have uh, work later on, so um, I'll be on at the usual time at 3 p.m. Eastern. I will also be on Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern, and then Saturday or Sunday, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to uh, get around to doing some errands. I'm probably gonna start later in the day. I haven't decided just yet, but uh, I'll let you guys know on Saturday when I plan um, what my plans for Sunday are. But uh, either way, uh, thank you again to everybody for 
the support this year, this past year. Wow, that's ugh, that's shitty to say. Um, this past year for you know helping the channel get up and running, and I appreciate the feedback, of course, and interacting with you guys. It it's really a lot of fun, and uh, look forward to seeing you guys at the stream or of course here in the comment section and. Feel free to keep sending in those replays. Um, I'm going to slow down a little bit. I need to get back to some of the content that I, uh, I've i been meaning to do. But uh, again, thank you, and I hope you have a great new year. I'll see you next time, guys. Take care.